Hello, Rob here from Flanagan Homestead. Today we're going to talk goats and goat basics. Uh, if you're thinking about getting goats and you don't know what it's going to take to have them, uh, I'm going to talk about just the real basics. Not too specific and detailed. I have other videos that are more detailed and other people have videos, but this is the general basics that you need to know. So I've had goats for uh, about 20, a little more than 20 years here now, and uh, <clears throat> things have changed on what I want to do and why I want to do things. But uh, uh, here's uh, some basics on having goats. First things first, you need to decide what you want goats for. Uh, there's a number of different reasons. Some people want them as pets uh, and they're just fun to have around and therapeutic. Some people, uh, I started my goat journey because I had all this hillside back here behind me that was all blackberries and I wanted that gone. I didn't want to clear it anymore. So I had goats for clearing uh, <clears throat> the blackberries and a number of people have goats for dairy and for meat. So you need to decide what you want them for. Um, I have Nigerian Dwarf right now, and the reason I choose that is very uh, very simply, I've got most land cleared, and uh, I like them. They're a friendly breed, and they're nice and small, and I also have a Christmas tree farm in which I take my goats to the petting zoo, and uh, even though my larger goats, my boars, were very friendly, they were just so much bigger than the kids that came in the petting zoo, it kind of scared them. So having Nigerian Dwarfs uh, made it a little bit easier to... Uh, and less intimidating for the kids. So I have Nigerian dwarfs currently, mostly Nigerian dwarfs. Okay, the next thing you need to know is goats are herd animals. I currently have 13. Uh, I think you can see some of them standing back here. They're just <laughs> staring at me, trying to figure out what's going on. But uh, you cannot have one goat. I mean, you can, but you absolutely should not have only one goat. They are a herd animal. They wanna be with other people. They wanna have friends, basically. So you need at least two. Uh, I've found that once you get up to three, any more than that doesn't necessarily make them any happier. But if there's a group, uh, two or three, they're plenty happy. So, but if you're going to have one goat, you need at least two. I recommend three. But uh, yes, they're a herd animal. So have more than one. Keeping your goats in is an important thing. And this is something that uh, a lot of people uh, do wrong. Uh, I was trying to sell some goats the other day and a guy called and he wanted to tether his goats uh, and to sort of clear up a brush path. And I'm not saying you can't tether a goat, but it's not a good idea. When I first bought goats, I thought I could tether my goats. Uh, uh, that's, if you don't know, that's put them on a leash and, stay, uh, and tying them to a tree or a stake or something. And I just found that that created more problems than it was worth. Uh, they had always wrapped the rope or chain around a blackberry vine or something else, get tangled up, uh, can't go anywhere. Uh, there are some ways that are better than others. I had more success when I had a big cable from tree to tree up high in the air in a pulley system so they could run back and forth and then the rope didn't tie around things. But, uh, you know, I had goats originally because it was going to save me time and uh, knock down my brush. And uh, I spent so much time untangling goats when I tried to tether them up. So do not, I do not recommend at all tethering your goat. You need to have a fence. And so let's talk about fences. I first built a fence with barbed wire strands, maybe six inches apart, five or six inches apart, way too wide for any goat. And then I uh, put electric fence wire in front of that. So when the goats, it took them a while to try to get through the barbed wire fence and they got zapped by the electric fence, they jumped back. And so that held them for a while. But once they get properly motivated, they ate all the uh, broadleaf that was in here, they want it out, they're curious, or your electric fence goes dead, they get through that fence really easily. So I went from tethering to a barbed wire fence to a sheep and goat fence, which is four by four strands, and uh, which is over four feet high. And if I really want to keep them off of that, I put a hot wire in front of that strand just to keep them from leaning on it. Here's an example of an ideal fence, at least four feet high. And this has two by four openings here. Most goat and sheep fencing has four by four holes or smaller. So here's an example of the standard sheep and goat fence. Uh, get it at any of your farm supply stores. Typically four by four holes, uh, small enough that the goats aren't getting through. Make sure it's all the way to the ground. Sometimes if I have taller, more athletic goats, I'll put a wire up above it uh, just to discourage them trying to go over the top. Uh, when talking fencing, if you've never had goats before, you'd be surprised uh, how, 
how small of a hole goats can get through. So when you build your fence, make sure you know it goes all the way to the ground and there's not holes and gaps in it. Uh, I used to store my grain inside where the chickens are and there was a tunnel for the chickens to get in that was six inches wide and a foot tall. And I had uh, boar goats that would lay down on the ground put their legs next to their body and wiggle in and get into there. I, I was like, how are they getting in here? And I just stopped and watched them do it one time. My Nigerian dwarf goats, especially when they're young, I have a six inch slat by a eight inch slat that uh, the chickens get through because they share a barn with the chickens. And I have to protect that when I have young Nigerian dwarfs because this hole goats will go through quite easily when they're young Nigerians. So don't leave a large hole goats can get through amazingly small holes. The next thing you're gonna need to have if you have goats is a shelter. I have a small barn that's my goat and a chicken barn up here right behind me. Uh, the, I have these 13 goats that sleep in half of this barn so they probably have a 10 by no, what do they have? A 12 by 8 space but that's plenty for the 13 goats partly because I have bunk beds but uh, most goats like to lay together or you know i have a mom and her children uh, her kids and they often sleep just piled up together keeping each other warm even on a little bunk together and even if they're not related they tend to like to crowd together so a goat when it's sleeping doesn't need a ton of space your shelter is usually recommended you need it at three sides meaning i gotta move a goat that's hitting the tripod uh, your shelter needs to be three-sided so that there's three sides so the wind can't just blow through. Even if there's a roof, if the wind can blow through, they can get awfully cold. They can do well with the cold, but they cannot do very, they don't do really well when they're getting really wet. So they need a roof on their head, three sides so the wind can't just blow through. I just have a large door, so it's three and a half sides. I just have a large door in my section of the barn, so it's basically three and a half sides. So in the winter, they're, there's no rain on them, the wind doesn't blow through, they can get in there and stay warm. Goats like to climb anyway, and they like to be high, they feel safer. So I have bunks in here. So this uh, shelf in my barn is uh, just below my eye level. There's another shelf down here, and here's one that's above the floor. And then obviously they can sleep down on the floor, you keep that clean. The whole herd could be on the floor, but most of them are up on a shelf, and they just climb on one bench to the next to the next, and there's usually about three goats on each of these shelves sleeping. So when it comes to feeding your goats, hopefully you have some land that they can go out and clear. That's the main reason I got mine originally. Goats lie, prefer, they can graze grass, but they're not grazers. Uh, they like to forage and browse with a broadleaf, so they did great knocking down the blackberry bushes here when uh, leaves of small trees like the alder and maple around here, they're all over, over that. Uh, other broadleaf plants, they're always uh, eating that up. That's really good, but they can eat grass as well. Uh, when it comes winter time, I will need to feed them more. I have 40 bales of hay uh, in the barn for my 13 goats that uh, I'm starting to give them now in uh, late October. And that'll be, they'll be needing that through about March, some of it, but they won't need a lot. Uh, a few bales a week uh, when there's snow on the ground. But other than that, they can forage. And uh, even with my 13 small goats, well, not all of them are small, but most of them are, a bale of hay along with a little bit of grain. Uh, grain gives them more uh, calories quicker and they like it. I recommend, I give my goats a little bit of grain every day, but when I say a little bit, each goat you know, has, is getting less than a handful of grain, but uh, it gives them a little bit more protein. But the other thing is, uh, they know that when I call them that I'm their friend and they come. So usually I have a call for them and, and so the reason I give them every day is for the, simply this. When goats do escape, which they will, I take my goats out through the fence and walk them through the woods and put them in another pasture. Sometimes I just let them out. But I know that they'll always come to me because I have a call. I just say, come boys! And when I yell that, my goats, wherever they are, if they can hear me, they'll come running. If they got out of the fence and they're up going towards the neighbor's garden, if they're out in the woods, if I holler that, my goats come running and I can get them right back anywhere I want because they know I, I feed them a little bit of grain uh, and some wet cob uh, every morning, which they love. Make that call every morning and I don't care where they are. If I do that, they'll come running. So 
it's good to give them a few more calories and it's good because it trains them come to papa when it comes to goats and feeding them hay goats are notorious hay wasters uh, if they have stuff in a trough they'll pull it out throw it on the ground and then they won't eat it once it's on the ground so i like to stick hay behind a two by four inch fencing that they could stick their nose through and then they can pull out what they're going to eat and no more and so they don't waste nearly as much. Uh, besides feed, I do like to provide uh, goat minerals and goat salts. I have just a loose salt that I put in, in their feed sometimes. I also tend to have a salt block. So this is the minerals, I have a salt block. And I like, uh, goats need selenium, so I get the salt block with selenium in it. And that's definitely beneficial for the goats. Okay, a couple other things about basic care for your goats. Uh, the basic shots that you'll need is CDT. Uh, that's like the bare minimum. Other people uh, provide them with more shots. You could get that down at your local feed store. It's not hard to give it to them. And they have syringes that you can buy to inject that. Uh, also, you probably want to deworm your goats at least twice a year. Uh, deworming goats is pretty easy. Uh, there's some grains that you could put in and mix it with a grain they'll eat up. Uh, there's also measured out pastes uh, that you can inject in their mouth and they make it taste so the goats want to lick it and eat it up so it's usually not hard to get them to do that but you'll probably want to deworm your goats uh, at least a couple times a year as i mentioned in the bedding uh, you know, and they sleep on bunk beds here in the barn uh, goats love to climb and play so if if you can allow them to be where there's a downed log or I've seen people put the wood spools out there or big rocks, goats or just benches or whatnot. Goats love to jump on it and jump off and play king of the mountain or run around. So uh, goats love to play and they love their play to involve jumping up on things and down. So if you can provide them a toy uh, to jump on, that makes them a lot happier too. So what kind of goat do you want? Do you want a doe? Do you want a weather, which is a fixed male? Or do you want a buck? And uh, you know, if you, you, can't, if you want to increase your herd, you're going to need some does. And does are, tend to be friendly, uh, not overly excitable. Uh, weathers are great uh, pets that you can usually get cheaper uh, and they're, they're not overly active. Uh, Bucks, on the other hand, you know, if you want to increase your herd, I have a buck that I want to keep. I've got a herd buck, and actually he's got some kids here I need to get rid of a couple bucklings. But uh, a buck, you might find, depending on the breed, it might be more than you want. They tend to be a little bit ornerier. Mine's, the one that I have right now, I love, I want to keep. But he's friendly, but a lot of bucks are really smelly. And one of their things when it's time to breed is they lean, they put their head between their legs and they pee up on their face to attract uh, the does don't know why that works but uh, anyway that's one of the things they do and they put off a scent to attract the does other than that and they can be really smelly when i had not this buck because he's not smelly that's why i want to keep him not as smelly but when i had my uh, other buck out near my neighbor's house they're like dude are you are you going to breed some more goats you know they were in that pasture over there we just smell your buck all day long and they were uh, tired of that so not all bucks are that bad like i said the one i have now is not that smelly but i've been around some bucks that you just did not want to be around either they're ornery or they're smelly but make a wise choice if you're going to have a buck on your farm. Last, uh, last fall, I, which is the normal breeding season, uh, not all, most goats will breed in the fall and have uh, their kids in the spring. Uh, it's a five-month gestation period for uh, goats. So, you know, maybe they're breeding in October. We typically have our kids late January, early February is when we're having them. But I had a couple bucks around last fall because uh, I wasn't able to sell off the one soon enough and the does went into heat and I would come down to the barn and the bigger buck, anytime the smaller buck got anywhere near a doe, he would just ram it and slam it against the wall. You thought you would think a major war was going on in here. So, um, be careful about having more than one buck when it comes to breeding season. Um, the goats usually do a pretty good job of giving birth without your help. Um, we're almost always gone on, on the dozens, 
dozens and dozens of goats we've had born in the barn. It's very rare that we are here when it happens. It seems like they wait till we're at church on Sunday morning and we come home from church and there's, there's goats laying around on the ground. Uh, if you have goats, two more things that you run into in goat care is you need to be clipping the hooves. I'll, I hopefully will have a chance to de quickly demonstrate that, not do a full video on it. Uh, their hooves do grow and turn in and you want to take off the excess. It's just like clipping your fingernails. They don't feel it. It won't hurt them. Uh, also, we choose to disbud most of our goats, which uh, you can have pulled goats, which means they don't uh, naturally grow horns, or you can disbud them and we have an iron that we burn them off with. And I do have another video on my channel if you want to watch that. A lot of people have put videos out there and talking about a, uh, a little copper circle and that's enough. It's not. Um, you need to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, my boys don't like helping me with this. The goats obviously are going to kick and scream and they're scared. But once you're done, they're like, hey, what was that all about? And they just go on and wander off their, on their day. Um, so it, it's a little uncomfortable for a minute, but then uh, it heals up quickly and they forget about it the moment after ha it happens. Um, I have my goats in a petting zoo, so I don't want horns. And the other thing is that a few goats that I tried leaving horns, I decided I was going to leave them. And the sheep and goat fence is four by four hole and the goat's heads, especially when they're younger, can fit through. And then the horns get hot, hooked on it and they can't pull back through. And twice my neighbor, when I wasn't home, heard one of my goats screaming and struggling and he went down there and he... Um, he had to go and get my goats out of a fence. So if I disbud my goats and they decide to stick their head through, they can pull it right back the other way and they're not gonna be stuck. They're actually safer that way. This is Ruby right here. She's a Nigerian dwarf. She's uh, one of my all time favorite goats. She's a sweetheart. She drops a couple kids every year, raises them well. She goes to the petting zoo and uh, treats the kids well, gives them good attention and is really calm. So anyway, number one goat I've ever had, Ruby Doe Nigerian Dwarf. So thanks for joining me on doing goat basics here on the Flanagan Homestead, where the Christmas trees are my business, teaching including horticulture is my job, and outdoor projects like raising goats and chickens are my passion. I hope to see you again soon, and we've got plenty of videos for you. Be blessed, my friends.